I built a nine foot dinghy that weighs less than a hundred pounds. Hi, I'm Joe and welcome to Motor City Boat Works. Let's get to work. If you're new to the channel, I want to welcome you to the works. In the works, I do projects related to boat building and boat restoration. This week, I'm going to be discussing how I built a nine foot ultra light dinghy for my pocket trawler. Because my trawler is 27 feet long, it's just big enough that I need a small dinghy to be able to go from the boat to the shore and back. Now, a dinghy is basically a small rowboat or a little motorboat that you use to get from the shore to your larger boat that might be out at anchor or on a mooring. Over the years, I've owned several dinghies, everything from a standard fiberglass rowing boat to a couple of Zodiacs to even a rigid inflatable. That thing was awesome. The dinghy for my Alban 27 had to meet a couple criteria. It had to be smaller than 10 feet. It had to weigh less than 100 pounds. It had to be low maintenance. It had to have a hard bottom. And it needed to look good. So I found this boat on Craigslist. Somebody was selling it. It was literally sitting next to their wood pile in Michigan. And it's basically a nine foot Dyer Dow sailing dinghy. These little boats were sold as a little sailing rowboat and uh, originally came with a mast and a simple sail and some simple rigging. But over the years, the owner had lost the mast and the sail and he was just selling it the way it was. It seemed to be in pretty good shape, although it was missing wooden tow rail and some other pieces. Also, the bottom of the boat had some dry rot and maybe some cracking where the keel board sticks through. I bought it for $75 and I figured that this might be a good candidate to try and uh, make an ultra light little rowboat, a little dinghy. These boats, when they came from the factory, they weighed about 105 pounds. That doesn't include the sail rig. So I reasoned if I could put it on a diet and get rid of some of the teak wood and kind of substitute in some composite materials, I might be able to make the boat quite a bit lighter. And the question was, how low could I go? How light could it be? So the first thing I did was I hacked out the flotation and the transom seat. I could have gotten rid of the teak half transom, but it appeared to be glassed into the fiberglass skin. I also chopped out the centerboard trunk, which was basically worthless. It uh, was kind of dry rotted and the fiberglass was cracking. Are you enjoying the show? Well, do me a favor. Would you hit the like button and also subscribe? Spread the word about Motor City Boat Works. No BS, just boats and restoration. Removing the centerboard trunk saved about 12 and a half pounds just getting rid of that. At this stage, just the hull alone, minus uh, the seats pretty much and, and everything else, it, it was somewhere around 55 to 60 pounds, just the fiberglass hull alone. The hull of the dinghy is made of fiberglass and you know, it's probably less than 3 16 inches thick. It's really quite flexible. I like to refer to it as a 55 pound sheet of paper. Every time I tried to pick this thing up and move it around, man, the hull just flexed and kind of sprung around. Once I had the boat completely stripped down and it was just a bare hull, then I started trying to figure out, well, what could I do to make it a little more rigid, but also what could I do to ensure that the boat you know, kind of stayed afloat in the future. And I came up with the idea of building in two watertight compartments, one in the forward part of the boat and one in the aft part of the boat. And my plan was I was going to build these watertight compartments out of a combination of different boat building composites, materials. Primarily, I was going to use a, a composite material called Cusa board. Now I've talked about Cusa board before, and I've featured several projects on my YouTube channel about building and using this product to construct things like the trawler hardtop and various bulkheads for the bathroom remodel on the trawler and a variety of things like that. Be sure to look at those episodes to get more information on Kusa board, how it works and how I use it so that you can really understand its benefits. Kusa board is a great product. It's a polyurethane dense foam that has been infused with fiberglass fibers 
it's basically a marine plywood substitute. But it's 40 to 60% lighter than marine plywood. It's stiff, it's waterproof, rot proof. It's a great boat building material. Now I wanna remind you, I have no sponsors. I get no compensation for talking about any of the brands or items that I show on my YouTube channel. But you must have some sponsors. No, somebody must be sponsoring you. No sponsors at all. You don't have any sponsors? None. Are you sure you don't have any sponsors? No sponsors. Seems like you might have a sponsor. I am beholden to no man. Now I only had a limited supply of Kusa board on hand working on this boat project. And so where I didn't have Kusa board, I decided to actually use thin pieces of quarter inch Luan plywood with fiberglass fabric or resin laid over it to ensure it was waterproof. This is kind of like a poor man's uh, cheap method of an ultralight material. The watertight compartments are tabbed in fore and aft and Epoxy fillets were laid into the corners to ensure everything was watertight and super strong. The top of the forward compartment is a piece of half inch Kusa board. Once the two watertight compartments were constructed, I then cut out some holes for little inspection hatches. These are also waterproof. This way you could store things inside the watertight compartments and get inside there if you ever needed to. At this point, the hull was quite a bit stiffer now that it had the two compartments kind of glassed in, but it really needed something a little more and, and it needed something to finish the top edge of the fiberglass hull. So I decided to make a tow rail out of PVC foam board. Now I've talked about PVC foam board before in my episode where I talked about boat building composite materials. Be sure to check it out. I talk about where to get some of these materials and how to avoid some added expense. I also talk about some pros and cons for each product and where they might be used in composite boat building. So in this case, PVC foam board was used to create the tow rail for the boat. It's sanded down using 150 to 200 grit sandpaper so that it's got some teeth to accept the epoxy that'll hold it in place. I glued the tow rail in place and I gently heated it with a heat gun to kind of help the foam board bend around the radius of the bow of the boat. Everything was clamped and glued in place and allowed to cure. Oh, it's good, right? If you're like me, you've searched the internet, you've scoured YouTube looking for good boat information. Boat restoration, real shop time. I'm not talking about somebody poking around on a derelict boat with a broken screwdriver. This is the real thing. Do me a favor, hit the like button and subscribe. And I'll tell you why. Because I sometimes do live stream from the boat shop and it's the only way to get advance notice. You need to hit subscribe and hit the notification button. The thing I like about using composite boat building material is that by and large, they're very forgiving. They can be cut with woodworking tools, things that you already have in your shop. And generally they can be sanded or sculpted using a grinder or a palm sander to get a really nice finish, nice round overs on all of the edges. And it gives it kind of a sculpted look. Traditional wood boat building methods, well, they have their place and wood is a beautiful material to be constructing boats out of. But making things out of composite materials it's got its own beauty and it allows you to do some things and get some benefits that you simply can't get when you're working with wood. I use this dinghy project as a way to kind of test out several materials and paints that I would be using for the larger pocket trawler project. In particular, I painted the dinghy using the same paint that I was going to use on the Alban 27. The dinghy was painted using the Rust-Oleum bright white and the royal red on the hull. One of the great things about dyer sailing dinghies is that they come with some really cool bronze fittings. Knees for the midship seat, cleats and some other things. It seemed like a shame to not make use of these beautiful bronze fittings. So I put them on a grinder wheel, kind of polish them up a little bit. And then because bronze will tarnish over time, I sprayed them with a clear coat from Eastman's. 
they really look sharp. This won't last forever, but it will keep the fittings looking relatively new for a period of time. In the end, I was able to get the dinghy down to about 78 pounds. It's amazing that it could get that light. Now, it's still a handful for one person to try and move around, primarily due to its size, and it's got about a three-foot beam. But the boat by itself only weighs 78 pounds, and it is possible to heft this thing over your head and put it up on top of the pocket trawler. Imagine a nine-foot dinghy that weighs 78 pounds. It's awesome. I've heard people say that plastic boats just don't have any soul, that they're somehow not salty, or they don't have the character that wooden boats have. And I just don't agree with that. What a great episode. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. But we're not done. Would you do me a favor? If you enjoy this channel and you enjoy these episodes, please, you can help me out. We have one remaining goal for the channel, and that's to reach 4,000 hours of viewing. We're at about 2,000 right now. We're halfway there. If every subscriber took a moment to watch the Albin 27 playlist, we would have more than enough hours and we'd reach our goal. Thanks so much. We'll see you next week. Stay motivated.